All right, so today I wanted to make a video about uh, something I'm asked quite often, uh, especially from people that, that live in Italy or in Europe, they want to move to England, and it's what's the experience of being a musician in, in London and in, in the UK, and uh, you know what are the costs involved with, uh, you know, with being in London, how can you get yourself in, in the system as a musician, and how much do gigs pay, and, and things like that, so to speak. So I wanted to make a bit of a short video uh, about about this because I've seen quite a few. I've seen some other musicians that have posted a a video about like Nashville or LA or, or New York or Paris and stuff like that. So I wanted to make, even though there must be other ones that have made the same video, a, a twenty twenty four version of what it is and you know how much it costs and and, and how much you can make uh, from from gigs and teaching and, and other bits and bobs that you can do as a musician in London and of course uh, in the UK. Of course. Uh, if your experience is different and if you want to add something to this conversation, you know, you can add a comment down in the comment section and link to other, to other videos and stuff like that. So um, this happens quite often because obviously uh, I have still quite a few connections in Italy where I'm originally from and quite a few Italians want to come over to, to London um, where I lived for about 10 years. I don't, I don't live in the greater London area now anymore. Uh, last year I moved out of the, like the M25 area, so to speak. Um, but I, I still, you know, I still play quite a bit in London and I go there quite often and play all over the UK. So, um, so to start with, let's say that, let's start from the costs, let's start from this, the costs. And then I will just maybe give some tips about how to get yourself in the system as a musician. Uh, and then I will explain, I will just mention some, um, you know, type of gigs that you can get in London. Uh, I would say that London, you know, London is a bit of a, a, a microcosm, meaning that uh, you know the, the money that you can make in London is different from the money that you can make outside of London. And then, obviously, uh, being paid as a musician is just the same as saying how long is a piece of string. You know what I mean? It, it's about your ability, your network, and your ability to uh, to barter a, a certain amount of, of money, so to speak. You know, rather than. Um, you know, really stand your ground as far as your value as a, as a musician, your experience. Uh, sometimes it depends if you really need the money or don't, you know, if you take the, a gig or not. So this is a, this is just a, a ballpark scenario, so to speak. There is to say that, let's say, gigs outside of London will definitely pay less than if you play inside, you know, in inner London or... Um, so, but at the same time, living in London is a lot more expensive than living outside of London. So I think it's, you know, it's give and take. So, um, I would say that if you wanted to move to London as of 2024, there are two scenarios where let's say you would rent a room in a shared accommodation, like a flat or, or a house, or you will be, uh, renting a, a whole flat, whole place by yourself, so to speak. And I would say at the moment, Let's say a room to, to just for a ballpark figure, it would be probably a thousand pounds to rent a room. Uh, sometimes some expenses are included, like the water or the internet, or something like that, sometimes are on top. Um, so you would have to, I would say, at the moment, if you uh, live by yourself in London, you're looking at 500 pounds a month of expenses. Obviously, please, I will be talking in pounds because I live in England, but. Um, you know, check with Google. You know the the exchange rate. You at the moment roughly one euro and to one pound, and maybe a bit more of one dollar to a pound, so to speak. Um, so, I would say if you wanted to have an accommodation, a thousand pounds per room, ballpark. Uh, sometimes you know uh, bills are included. Sometimes they aren't. If you live by yourself, I would say expect to pay for a one bed flat, which is just you know a bedroom, a kitchen or bathroom. Uh, I would say a thousand five hundred as a starting point. Uh, and I'm not talking about central London. I'm talking about uh, areas like London is divided in zones. So like, let's say zones like in Stratford and um, or Richmond and out, so to speak. That you know if you're going to Soho. You're talking about in the thousands of pounds, three, four thousand pounds. It's, it's the same as say, like living in Manhattan versus living in Brooklyn or something like that in New York, so to speak. Um, so you know, the inner city will be way more expensive than um, than living outside. Another thing to to keep in in, uh, in consideration when you move to London, when you move to England, and you're, you're looking at renting rather than buying a property, 
um, to live in, you will have to go something that it is called, um, uh, you know, it, it's it's something that an agency will put you through. It's a test in terms of like your financial stability and how much you make, uh, because sometimes you will have to pay in advance. You know, a, a choice would be for you to pay in advance six months of rent, okay? Or sometimes they even ask you to do that, or even a, a whole year of rent. So you can see you, you need to have uh, 15 to 20,000 pounds ready to go, so to speak. Uh, and um, uh, but sometimes they need to uh, see that you have at least two and a half times your yearly rent uh, as, your, uh, as your income. So we'd say if, if a thousand pounds is your is, is your rent uh, or the rent of the room, you will need to make at least twenty five k a year. Okay, so be aware of that because you don't want to move to to London without having found something uh, in terms of accommodation, especially if you're coming from abroad because you, you know you, you've been for a shock, so to speak. Uh, all the big cities, obviously, they come with this kind of um, you know with this price tag, so to speak. So I would say, you know, just as a, as a break-even point, you want to be making 20, 25K, uh, which is doable in London, you know what I mean, uh, as far as rent and bills um, to, to be able to survive, okay? Um, I would say probably in 2024, the average, the average income in the UK, at least I'm just looking at stats, is about 33,000 pounds. So um, you have to make sure that you have uh, you know, gigs. You have more than one income. Either you do something else and then you just, just do gigs, uh, either original gigs or whatever, and uh, or you will teach and do gigs or produce and do gigs. So un unless you're really in the, in the top end where you have big tours or, or big studio work where you can go into Abbey Road and make a grand a day, so to speak. But uh, obviously that you need to have the credits. Yeah, I'm talking about the, the general, a general working musician, okay? Um, I'm assuming if you're already like a top end touring guy, you won't have, you, you will not even be watching this video, okay? These are just for, for, for general working musicians that want to move to London or, or, or to the UK. Obviously, if, uh, you know, outside of London, there will be you know, reduce in terms of that a room will be or or a, or a flat will be a lot cheaper to rent but that obviously comes with a price of having gigs paid less or being the less less work in 10 years of living in london i never had any issues as, as a you know as expensive as it is to live in london um there is a lot of work the music scene is great if you, you have to you know get in the system and you have to work but the work is there you know yeah, in terms of like getting into the system, it depends what type of musician you are. And let's say if you're a session player that, do, that does pop gigs and does a bit of teaching, go to jam sessions. There are a ton of jam sessions in London, a ton. And especially house musicians, you know, the people in the house band, the people that organize the jam session. As much as the jam can be anything, you can get somebody that has, has never performed live to just a guy that is touring and just happens to be in the area, wants to play a tune and be, you know, involved in the scene. It's like a killer musician. Um, you know, you can get anything. So, you know, you have to find a jam session that is local to you, uh, and it's obviously feasible for you to go and and explore the area and just talk to the house band members. Usually, those are the guys that have, you know, gigs, uh, and try to create a genuine friendship or a genuine, you know, try to be involved in in creating. The scene, you know, and, and don't just be the person that takes the gigs. Try to create and you know, make things easier for everybody. Um, that's again for for the pop, you know, pop or jazz um, function session players. To speak, let's talk about it that way. In terms of teaching, obviously, there is more of an academic thing where you might need to have a piece of paper, some kind of accreditation, and um, and again, teaching for me. Has been, you know, to me that's the steady, that's the, the job of being a musician, the work inside of being a musician. And I would say in London, you could probably get, let's say, from thirty pounds an hour to fifty, sixty if you're teaching a college. Uh, but obviously, it's this is not working like a full time, forty hours a week job. If you want it properly, the, the work is there. But that's um, that's that, so to speak. And obviously, as I said. 
these are ballpark figures you could get if you're a big name you could get a lot more than that if you have no experience you will be starting from you know if you're a teenager that just just doing a bit of teaching you might be starting for a lot less than that uh, there are some some agencies if you want to teach uh, but obviously be aware that we'll take a big chunk uh, same thing as like music services that you can get in touch with that will give you some students or in, get it you know it will get you involved with uh, um, with, the, with the teaching scene in schools but again be aware that it will take a, ch a chunk of your earnings as the commission so to speak um, uh, and I've never worked with with agents in terms of either music services and stuff and I always done my own thing I taught privately and I taught in school and I still do and I teach in colleges and higher educational like universities to speak uh, and privately privately through zoom so uh, and then you know for that you can make your own price when you teach privately uh, depending on your credits on your availability on your uh, so you know uh, that's something that you have to find yourself you have to kind of test a little bit the, you know, the water so to speak so a west end player which is uh you know, a, a, a theater session player, so to speak. The, the, story, the thing there is a little bit different because you're involved more in the, in like the reading scene. <clears throat> you're doing session, sessions where you have to read, you sit in the pit of a theater or on the stage of a theater. And that's slightly different uh, where uh, there's a bit of cross-pollination, let's say, between the pop world and that. But it's a bit like working in Broadway or, or in the theater district in, in Boston, so like, So you have to sit in with in the show. So you have to kind of meet one of these guys that are in in the orchestra and ask if you can just sit in with with the orchestra just to you know to check out the scene, start meeting musician, get in the you know in the list of depths, um, so that you know obviously that's that you know that that is what it is you know in, in terms of um you might be waiting a year to get one gig uh, but i think sometimes it probably helps more to get into let's say lower level and uh, being i don't mean to be disrespectful meaning like get into like a tribute band get into something like that that eventually they do theater gigs and by doing that you end up meeting musicians that are involved in a the theater scene and a bit of the time you might be involved in the the higher end theater gigs and usually i find because obviously theater gigs tend to be more about accuracy than entertainment let's say a pop gig is about how you entertain the crowd you don't have to be the best musician you don't even need to appeal to read music and again i'm i'm massively generalizing here i don't mean to be disrespectful by but because uh, there are amazing pop, pop players but it's about the sound it's about the look it's about the how you behave on stage um, where in theater they might not even see you it's about consistency uh, it's about being dependable do you um, do you turn up on time can you read music do you do you minimize mistakes do you know how the system works in terms of like uh, do you have a reliable system and nowadays it's all in-house you turn up and there's a camper set up with all the patches so you don't have to do that you turn up you know if you are in we will rock you they even give you the guitar because it's you know it's it's part of that you know that system so to speak um and again that's uh, that depends i've, I've done theater gigs where uh, and I, again this is these are something that i've checked that the people that were in the system that would start from let's say 150 170 pounds to then you have a, a a yearly or monthly contract where you can make in the in the tens of thousands let's say a top end west end player from what i hear they can make 40 50 60k if they are the main person and they're there all the time remember that you know you can send depths you know the, these these first call people they're not there all the time they will do most of the gigs and they're contracted to do a certain amount of gigs but they will have a list of depths so your job is to get yourself into the depth list so to speak and to get in touch with these people and uh and sometimes you will be paid uh by um in you know gig by gig and and then obviously there is the, the tv world which is slightly different uh and there is this tv world is a very 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 small uh, you know section of that because you might be doing a one-off gig with a with a pop musician that is paid um as a one-off you know you invoice the company you know the management company and you know that the artist is managing 
um, and then you are paid through, you know, one of the portals, so to speak. Um, I've not done much of that, but then again, same as in the West End, there are certain orchestra like you know the Saturday Night Show thing, which have their own thing, and they have you know TV rights. So again, that's uh, is you as good as you are to be you know to create your own fee, so to speak, and say, well, this is enough or it is not enough. Uh, I I know of people that you know again get about a thousand pounds a day for doing that work because obviously they are image rights and stuff like that. But um, but again that's on a one-off basis um to go back to the uh the, the function world again functions are about i would say within london obviously they're paid more than outside of london i would say that the lower rate would be probably about 200 pounds per gig if you go up you can go into the, the three four five hundred uh, per gig if you go abroad but then again you're, you're getting into the, the really the top end uh, and, and again, functions, I mean weddings, uh, corporate gigs when you play for a, um, a company uh, Christmas do or something like that. So you are in the hundreds of pounds. Um, then there is the, you know, the pop touring world where, again, you might be doing tours where you might be part of, of, the, of the band or, or just, again, doing just a small few weeks you know um where again i would say some of the the better acts pay you know again same as a corporate gig like three four hundred pounds per gig uh then you will you might have um you know the off days there are considered travel days there might be half fee but then again it's not uncommon to hear you know, uh, pop musicians at the very early stages. I mean, our artists at the very early stages, they will pay a fraction of that. So, and it's up to you to to say yes or no. To be uh, aware that is that something you do for let's call it exposure, but at the same time, you know, with some remuneration. I'm I'm a bit against doing things for exposures for no money, but uh, it's up to you if if you know your the band is. A bunch of friends of yours or, or the music is amazing you love what the artist is doing you will support it um so it, it's really up to you you can you know it, and it's great to be involved in original music i always try to uh, to be involved in original music regardless obviously i don't want to make a loss but at the same time um i want to make sure that there's enough of the pain stuff to be able to do the original stuff because i think that that's something that needs to be um really that's the reason why we start playing, so to speak. Um, jazz musicians. Okay, if you're in the jazz world, um, I would say that there are still, like in New York and in, in, in the UK, especially in London, there are still gigs where you do for the hat, you know, which means that you play and there might be a fee coming from the bar, you know, a, a, a cut coming from the bar, and then you go around with a hat, although there is a, a hat somewhere and people put in, and there's a good, I think there's a good uh, ethical side of that. People really enjoy that kind of stuff. They still want to be involved. I do it occasionally for jazz, for original music. And to be surprised, sometimes I make more money than, than doing regular gigs, so to speak, um, or like bar gigs, so to speak, not like the higher paid ones. Um, but in general, I would say that I, I, I still enjoy doing that. I, and, and, and you have to be willing to be part of that, the small club jazz and funk scene where you like playing to a table that it's really like the, the first table is just next to you, so to speak. People are, some people are very uncomfortable and put up by that, but I grew up doing that and I really, really like it. I like the, the kind of cozy environment and the organic feel of that, so to speak. So, um, um, so that's, that's kind of the idea really. And, um, I don't know much about classic, the classical world. I know that, even in big orchestra, the, the, you know, the costs are quite low. But then again, if you're the first call, first violin, stuff like that, then you will be probably paid quite well. I don't want to, you know, that's a world I don't know. If you're involved in that, please, uh, you know, just send, write a little comment. So you can see really that there is no one, one size fits all type situation that, um, that, that fits the, the scenario of being a musician in a big city like London or in the UK. Uh, I would say that it's 
it's up to you to find your niche, to find your you know your space, and be realistic with what you need in terms of money. You know, in terms of what you need, to, what you need to make a living. Um, be very wise in terms of like keeping whatever there is left over. Um, don't don't throw it all away in in partying and and buying gear that you don't need. I know that gear is an investment. You know, it's, it's sometimes. Um, so try to what I'll need quite a bit is to be quite wise in terms of like investing money and stuff like that. So that really helped build, you know, a, a side, you know, a, a buffer, so to speak. So you know, in, in uh, educate yourself and in invest in the, the the money that you have left over. Um, so and and do things like be quite aware of the costs of, you know, getting into the city. Um, you know your Uber uh, bill, my my bill, you know my bill up, you know my built up quite quickly. If you're not, you know, if you're, you know, you, you might spend more than what you make sometimes. Be aware of, of the cost of moving around the city. Try to keep your your gear lightweight. Uh, these things, these modelers are amazing these days. A lot of a lot of clubs. Like Ronnie Scott's or, or Pizza Express, or things like places like that, they have their, their own in-house backline, so you can, you know, you can uh, use those and rock out with a couple of pedals. So that you know, proper clubs usually have a, a backline, so you know, use that stuff. Even though sometimes it's well maintained or not, uh, get one of those amps in a small pedal uh, or a small head that you can put in your rucksack. So if the amp is not great, you can plug in the head. And you can, you know, you can do the gig, you know, in that way. Yeah, that's that's about it, really. I hope this video helped. And as always, if you feel that this video was of any help to you, uh, please like it, subscribe, share it, um, and all the usual stuff. Share it through a friend, to a friend through social media and stuff like that. And check out all my other my other videos in in my channel. I do a mix of, uh, you know, modelers patches and, and instructional stuff. I play different styles. I really enjoy being involved in any possible way in, in the music scene uh, as a, you know, playing pop, rock, jazz, funk, and whatever else, really. So, um, yeah, take care. Bye-bye.